Where do I start with this week's guest? Well, he is a fishing guide, a videographer, a photographer, a YouTuber, an influencer. He owns a fish batter company. He owns a outpost on Lake of the Woods. And all of this, he's done very, very successfully. And he's going to open up on how to make a living in the sport of fishing if you love it enough and you're willing to work hard enough at it. This week... Jay Siemens joins me on I'm Bob Cobb for the Bassmaster. Welcome to Mercer. Well, it must be Wednesday because here I am talking to you fine folks once again. And with that in mind, welcome one, welcome all friends, family, freeloaders, fishing freaks. You're all welcome here at the Awkwardly Honest Fishing Podcast that goes by my last name, which is Mercer. I hope you are all having a great week and um, hopefully this will make your week a little better. And I think it will because I, I'm I'm... Kind of excited about this week's guest. Uh, this week's guest is somebody I don't really know that well. Somebody I've known for years, but don't know that well. Just because, you know, we know each other. I think we both have mutual respect towards each other. Um, but our relationship is kind of just through social media. We talk um, through text and things like that. And um, I'm actually going to get to know him a little bit today. But... This cat is an incredible dude, if you ask me. For somebody I don't know, I mean, he might be totally boring. We'll find out here in a few minutes. I don't think so. But Jay Siemens is um, one of those dudes. I always say there's a lot of ways to make your living fishing. But Jay Siemens has literally done most of them. You know, whether it be as a fishing guide, as a videographer, as a photographer uh, in front of the camera behind the camera now he works with meat eater you know he's doing some major things he has his own um, fish breading company what, what would that be called he's building it basically dude is building a fishing empire has a camp on lake of the woods lives in Kenora, ontario has a fish batter company like i said has a successful youtube channel link will be in the description down below make sure you check that out does stuff for meat eater you know really just every time i turn around i say jay siemens and he's doing really good in different things and and it's really cool to see because you know what i think he's a pretty good dude but you guys can be the judge of that and i think we'll find that out here over the next hour or so without further ado let's travel all the way to the home of the Bassmaster Classic Champion, Kenora, Ontario. Also, the home of Jay Siemens, and here he is right now. Jay, this is going to be a neat one, a, a different one. I mean, because most of the time when I have a guest on, I'm like, yeah, I talk to this person all the time. But you're like a friend of mine that we've never been friends with. You know what I mean? Like, it's weird. Like, no, I'm we, always, we know all yeah. the same people. We, have been in the same areas at times, but I'm always busy or you're busy. And we've had like two minute conversations, but I figured out if nothing else, this podcast will allow us to have a conversation together. This, this, yeah, it's a good excuse to chat for an hour. And we, we've we exchanged some, well, the first story I wanted to tell actually is I was trying to find it. I dug through Facebook, but I messaged you. I must've been 14, 15 years old. And I messaged you on Facebook and you responded. I watched your TV show. I'm like, I'm going to message Dave Mercer. And you responded, <laughs> which I was just so shocked by. And I had just made a little video. It was no thoughts of making a YouTube channel, but I sent you a video of me catching a lake trout on Lake of the Woods. And I don't know if you actually watched the video or not. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't care either way, but you said, Hey man, great video. Like, thanks for sharing. And I was just like, wow, this is so sweet that you took the time to respond. I still have the autographed, um, the fishing line magazine that you're on the cover of we probably met at the winnipeg boat show yeah 15 years ago and i remember just like going up and i was just vibrating when i go to those <laughs> seminars and i'm like 
oh my goodness, this is the guy from TV and, and getting your autograph. And I was like, hey, Dave, you remember that video I sent you? And you're like, oh yeah, I remember. It, I, there's no way you remember the video, but you had me convinced that you remember that video that you watched of mine. And I can only imagine how many fan messages you got and get. And yeah, that, that's, my, that's my fanboy moment. Wow. Wow. I, well, I'll tell you this. If I said I watched the video, I did. Because I can yeah. tell you this. Like there's... Yeah. I mean, there's people that come up to you that you're like, remember me? And I'm like, well, of course. And I don't, there's, yeah. time. but, but, I, but if I ever like responded to someone and said, I watched your video, it was, yeah. I mean, I would at least watch it because yeah. I, I just always think the entire world's going to turn on me at some point and be, it'll be like, well, you, you obviously didn't watch my video because one minute into it, I said, Dave Mercer's a jackass. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I'm I'm glad we had a good interaction. I'm glad I responded to you because it would have been a whole different po opener to a podcast. You were like, I sent you a letter, you son of a bitch. And yeah, you remember never that got time back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. It's wild. But dude, yeah. you um so obviously I've been keeping my eye on you since you sent that email. But yeah, there you go. Yeah. I'm really impressed with what you have accomplished and continue to accomplish. I mean, you literally um, you know, I kind of joked about this with you already, but I always say there's so many ways to make a living fishing because everybody's like, I want to be a tournament pro or I want to host yeah. a TV show. But there's so many ways that you can make a living from the sport of fishing. But you've done a lot of them from guiding to shooting to being in front of the camera, from being behind the camera to still to video to everything. Well, thank you. Um, and I think you're good at it all. I mean, you found success at it all. You know, uh, I, I, I don't know. It's just, it's been, I've been very blessed. Like I, I, like I said, I, I grew up watching you and watching Azumi and Italo and just like, there was a time where I was like, okay, I'm definitely going to, you know, make a living in the fishing industry. And then there was a time where I was just like, oh, cool. I'm going to go to photography school and see what happens. And I mean, dep depends how deep we want to get into the story, but, uh, yeah, I think it's so interesting these days because people think there's a very fine line. Some people think the only way to make it in the industry is to go fish the elites. And yep. I can tell you, I probably could have put all my effort into fishing the elites. And I don't think I'm a good enough fisherman to make the elites. Like there's just, I, I never claimed to be a, a phenomenal fisherman. I, I, uh, I think having the video skills has helped open some doors and stuff. But yeah, it's, I think it's just been dabbling with everything and then you never know where the next door is going to open and something is just i've always said yes I, I i have a very tough time saying no um to the point that you know maybe it overloads my schedule at times but saying yes has opened incredible things that i would have never would have never guessed yeah so is it all just a means to an end like at some point in your life did you literally because i tell my kids and i literally remember having this moment like i i remember being you know, I guess I was getting, you know, I was 17, 18 or whatever. And I remember thinking like, oh, my gosh, school's going to finish at some point. And because I would fish all summer long and then I go to school yeah. and then I'd fish all summer long. But I was like, this is going to end. And I'm, you know, I know I want to have a family one day and they're going to make me stop fishing if I don't figure out a way to make this a living. Like, I literally remember laying in my bed thinking, like, so how do you convince people that this is a job and you're working towards a job? Did you have the same thoughts growing up? Uh, I mean, like, so I did the fishing guiding thing. So when I was like 16 to 22, I was a fishing guide and that was a yeah. summer job, right? But there's very few people that continue, especially when you're at like a fly-in lodge, that continue that lifestyle because it is a lifestyle. You disappear for 70, 80, 90 days. And I knew that that was something I couldn't sustain if I wanted to have a family, you know, family's always in the back, back of my mind for sure. And, you know, there's some people that are able to sustain the guiding all summer and, and still have a family and, and props to them for doing that. Um, but yeah, I didn't really know what was going to happen. And then, you know, in the midst of being a fishing guide, I connected with a guy named Aaron Weeb and he asked if I wanted to film a fishing show for him. And I, I had just got accepted into photography school. And I was three days away from going to school. Aaron and I hung out three days before school was supposed to start. And he's like, hey, do you want to drop out and film this fishing show with me? I had very little video experience, but I'm like, you know what? This is one of those things where I need to say yes, because I can always go back to school. School's always going to be there. And that kind of kickstarted everything. Um, 
And I, at that point it was, uh, I didn't know where I was going to lead. It was, it was the start of YouTube. And, and this is another funny thing. I don't know if you remember this tweak you made, but this, so I, I filmed with a guy for, for those of you that aren't familiar, this guy named Aaron Weeb, Uncut Angling. He's like, I don't know, I would say like a forefather of YouTube fishermen. Cause he just, oh, yeah. and did some wacky stuff. Sometimes when I was filming it, I'm like, what am I being a part of? But it, it caught the attention. It was something that was, you know, a little bit different in the fishing world and in the YouTube fishing world. And he made a music video. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, uh, I'm right on this tweet, but he made a music video to a Miley Cyrus cover, uh-huh. Red Chair Swing. And Aaron was eating corn and he had a duct tape girdle swinging on a chair that we found on the side of the road. And I think you tweeted and you said the changing of the guard. Do you remember that? <laughs> Maybe. I don't, yeah, I've something always along those thought, lines. Yeah. Dude, I thought that you guys, and I was very vocal for, I thought what you guys did with Uncut to me was because it was weird when we started facts and fishing. Yeah. Which was, I don't know, 10, 15, 10 years before that, whatever it was. Yeah. We were that disruptor. You know what you I mean? Like, yeah, you change things. Like it was, it was things. I'm like, this is not a normal fishing show. You guys ca- counting every cast and the amount of camera angles and the yeah. and editing, like it was. Yeah. But, I, but I think that, and that's, if i tweeted that like that's what i meant by that too because to me that was like that there's a whole different like some of the stuff that like i remember honestly at one point getting mad that's how creative <laughs> you guys were and i swear to you, i remember thinking look why didn't i think of filling my freaking boat full of bananas this is some somebody yeah. help me because these guys are coming up with but it's that weird youthful hunger and oh. and and i think aaron is incredibly talented when it comes oh, to he- stuff like that and, and the conversation that I've had so many times with people is like, Jay, why doesn't Aaron make more videos that I, I could, I, I would be rich if I had a nickel for every time I had that conversation. And it's like, Aaron is such an artist and he, his ideas are so out, out of this world that he, we would go and we would strike out five times in a row, but then he would, and I wasn't a part, like a lot, I, I give props to Aaron on all, all that creative stuff, but like, he caught a big pike with the YouTube play button when he used to be that yeah. taco, right? Yeah. And it's just like, what a wild idea that he's just like, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to make a video of it. And and I think that was like, he struck out a lot, but when he hit, it was just his videos, I feel. And he, another thing people don't realize is he edited all of his videos. I didn't do any of the editing. I, I held the camera. I, I give so much props to what Aaron did on a lot of that. Cause a lot of it is, is editing too. But uh yeah, some of his ideas where I'm like, Aaron, is this really worth it? Is this worth whatever? Trying to do this thing. I and and I, I think it was. I think those videos are still being watched, some of them. And uh prop props to him, right? Yeah, yeah. It it and Aaron's another guy who I've had conversations with over text, over social media and stuff. Yeah. Very little, like very little interaction similar to me and you, but but I mean, you, I, I'm a big fan of everything that you guys did, but, but so at that time, were you guys just literally, so you had no experience, like you showed up and I got to figure out how to turn this camera on. Oh yeah. Like Aaron, Aaron says, he's like, here's the budget. Let's buy a camera. You go on B and H photo, pick whatever you think. So I'm just ordering camera gear. I have no idea. I'm trying to do as much research as possible. Uh, order laptop, camera gear, Pelican cases and stuff. And then it's like, okay, we're hitting the road. And like, I've told this part of the story many times that I remember like making that first video and we're at some hotel in some tiny little town in Eastern Manitoba and he uploads the first video and it gets 300 views and we are losing our minds. We're like, how could 300 people be watching this video? And yeah, like if we knew at that moment, but it, it was interesting too, because like if we talk to companies or accommodations and we're like hey here's what we're doing we have a youtube channel and you're like oh youtube channel it's like yeah we don't didn't really care want- at all we don't, we don't care like what's a youtube channel we don't we we do tv shows we do billboards and that and that's how they did their sponsorships and yeah. i mean we can dig more into this but now it's just like youtube is one of the first things i feel people you know oh, yeah. for it's myself the exact opposite you know? yeah. it's the exact opposite now that now and it's I- like cool you're on tv my parents watch that tell me what you do in social media um yeah no it's it's amazing and i remember that change happening in the industry as well like i remember i I told the story a bunch of times like it was i had social media as part because for whatever reason i was an early adapter on facebook or whatever and and 
all these different social medias as they came. And I was putting that in proposals and stuff and and, and companies literally were like, yeah, next page. Yeah. Like they didn't care. And then it was like one year, all of a sudden, I remember that January, people started coming back to work after Christmas and I was getting yeah. calls from those same companies. They're like, remember we were talking about social media. Let's talk about it a little more. And now, yeah. man, it's incredible how things have changed. Like it's easier to get a, I think, People think it's harder now, but I think it's easier to get a fishing show or make a mark in the fishing world than it's ever been yeah, in the history of the sport. It, it used to be, I was talking to the Fishing Canada guys and they were saying that like the camera gear at the start or Don Lamont who had a Manitoba show back in the day, he said your camera gear was, you know, 50 grand. Your airtime was maybe 50 to 100 grand. You're like 100 grand in. And now you take your iPhone, whatever, and it shoots better quality than those cameras did back then. And you yeah. can edit it on your phone and you can post it for free and anybody can see it. You're not buying airtime. So it's like, it's added more competition, but also I really, I get the comment lots that oh, YouTube fishing is saturated. I still think there's so much room. Like I, I think there's tons of room for more people to do, it, especially localized stuff. Like I love seeing stuff shot, you know, I mean, the only other guy that does YouTube videos in my area really is Jamie Bruce. I know you've had him on, yeah. on podcasts and stuff. And he, you know, he's self-taught, figured it out in the middle of fishing tournaments and he's crushing it, you know, and there's, I think there's room for more people. Right. I, I think that the YouTube is saturated. YouTube is saturated with the same thing. Like that's yeah. the problem. It's, it's fishing shows were saturated before we started. Fishing shows were started before you guys started. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. you'd, if you had, a, and I think everybody kind of goes through this when they first start where they're the world's worst Bob Azumi, whoever knockoff, you know what I mean? Whoever you yeah. grew up yeah, watching, yeah. that's who you kind of yeah. try to be. But when you be yourself on camera, that's what I find is what people respond to. You know, you be real, be genuine. Um, and you guys were definitely doing that. So you did, you did that for how long? Two, three years? Like you didn't. Oh, probably longer. Like 2011 is when it started. And I probably, you know, did it for, yeah, probably like six years. Pretty, oh, pretty wow. consistently with Aaron. Yeah. So 2011, it started. And then I would say like in, in the meantime of, of doing on Ken Angling, I was still guiding. And then, uh, and then my own production company was kind of building in the background just because, uh, you know, I never did on Angling. Like it, it was always such a passion thing that, yeah. you know, uh, I, I wanted to see what was happening. I was enjoying the learning process of the whole video photo world. So I was shooting weddings. I was shooting corporate stuff, tourism stuff. And then kind of like that business kept getting busier, busier, busier. And then Aaron, uh, for any of you who have met Aaron or talked to Aaron, he, he's just, he's, uh, he's just a very unique dude. And, and part of also filming fishing shows, I know you understand this is scheduling is the worst thing because you're scheduling around a bite and you're scheduling around weather and to book a trip months out is pretty difficult so it, for Aaron too it was almost his own conscience was like Jay I don't feel right like you keeping your schedule wide open for me he's like you've got this business going and then Aaron started self-filming more so it, people ask you know was there some split not at all and I've done projects with him since but it was just like Aaron started doing self-filming it was easier to go on moments notice if you're filming yourself um, and he obviously got better on the filming side of things as well. And then my media business was growing and then kind of, I stopped filming uncut. I was filming my own, like my production stuff. And then kind of in the midst of all that, um, I was like, well, I want to start documenting my own, my own videos. And I wasn't like, I want to be the next Aaron Weeb. I was like, I just, whatever I'm, I'm filming all the time. I'm on some cool locations. So I'm going to start making videos. And my first couple of videos, they weren't even, uh, they weren't even really, some of them were fishing videos, but some of them were just like, Hey, come behind the scenes on this tourism shoot or behind the scenes on this wedding or whatever. And it was just like, I'm going to document it and see what happens. Did, did but, your first vlog was like, a, I think I remember you like being like, so I'm going to vlog now. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm just going to do this. And, yeah. uh, Oh, and it's, it's like tough. It's so cringy to watch those because I'm just like, it's tough to watch myself in front of the camera. Some of the editing, all, all that, but like, that's that's the only way you get better and and whatever i wouldn't i wouldn't change it for the world but you watch those videos and it's like okay i had you know i still feel watch my videos i'm like hey i got a long ways to go um but yeah that was probably like 20 probably 2018 where i started taking youtube a little more serious and then uh you know a couple people hopped on board to help support it at the start um and then you know it, it was like i was doing 90 percent corporate 
video, 10% YouTube. And then the next year it was 30% YouTube, 70% corporate work. And now it's, you know, 98% YouTube. And I, I still do, you know, a couple of shoots. I feel like it maybe keeps me sharp as a shooter if I'm still shooting some stuff for, you know, some tourism or fishing industry partners and stuff. But yeah, uh, yeah, I still love the photo video side, but it's, it's definitely different when you're on the other side, right? Have you done, did, were you shooting the stuff yourself when you were in the Weather Network stuff or did you? No, I never, actually, I've been shooting more stuff myself in the last, number of years than i ever did at one time yeah. i never shot any of it i was yeah. you know i would just fire ideas out there and we just go try to do it but um the youtube thing forces you to shoot more yourself i think and i think just scheduling your life like you know yeah. what i mean like even even this even to if yeah. we did this in a more cumbersome way where i did you know get a shooter here and do whatever it, it just I, yeah I, my, i'm always on the move um before we move on, though, one of the things you mentioned, do you think it's a good thing? And do you think it is a thing that will probably persist through your life that you'll always kind of look back at the stuff from five years ago and be like, mm. well, I, I I guess I think that if I ever, not, I know I'm so far from it, so I don't even want to say this, but if I ever thought like, okay, I've got it perfected, well, then it's like, no, it's like, I feel like you always need to look back and be like, okay, I can do this better. I can do that better. Because otherwise, you know, you're going to go on cruise control, right? Yeah. I never want to go on cruise control because I am always just trying to improve on my last video, right? It's like, how can I do it a little bit better than my last video? And the other thing too is how can I keep, you know, pushing forward and what, what YouTube fishing is, right? Like I think Aaron, you know, paved away. I think you're paving away. And I think it's just like, how, how can I, how can I do that? Right. So I don't want to get complacent and being like, okay, I got it figured out now. Here's the formula because people get bored of seeing the formula too. Right. So then I, that's what I like about YouTube is I can, I can experiment. I can do something yeah. completely different. And if it falls flat, well, it falls flat and I try something different the next time, or maybe I'm really proud of it because the other part of YouTube is you can get so caught in the analytics that you end oh. up chasing, you chase what's going to do good more than what you want to make. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're doing uh, nothing against fishing challenges, but like maybe all of a sudden you're doing these fishing challenges that you're not passionate about. Cause I, yeah. I had an editor, I had an editor that did some, he worked for some other fishing YouTubers and he's like, man, I just, I can only edit so many of these Walmart fishing challenges. He's like, it's, that's not my passion. And uh, I, I get that. Right. So that's something I'm, I'm aware of. It's just like, I, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to do something just, just for the views. Right. How do you, how do you avoid that though in your world? Like, it, it, like, so how do you judge the success of a video? Can, can, can you release a video that you shot and loved? And when you hit post, you loved it. Like you literally thought, man, this is, this is everything yeah. I wanted to accomplish. And if it does kind of subpar well, or even just average, do you still feel that that, do you still feel the same way about that video? Uh, yeah, if, it's it's tough. Like if I can be proud of looking, yeah, like it's something that is a part of it too is just like if I want to make, uh, you know, and the cool thing about a YouTube channel is you can you can help people along the way, right? Like it's yeah. I feel like it's a very self centered thing. Like hey, watch me catch a fish. But the cool part of it is I can go to a fishing lodge and I can help put people to that lodge i can put bodies in those beds right so yeah. for me what i love you know more than the views is to talk to a lodge owner after and he's like jay since that video got posted yeah we were booked up the next three weeks or it's just like a like, like let's say it's a small lure company or something it's like jay the, we sold a bunch of that lure whatever so not the, not that i'm all about you know the consumerism side either but it's just like people are if i can help someone else make a livelihood in the fishing industry by promoting their guide business the lure the whatever it might be there's a cool side to that as well which feels a little bit self-centered or like less self-centered um so that I, I really like gauging that's how i sometimes gauge my success more and you can still look into the analytics side like i can you know there's something called bitly links for you guys that are uh, you know uh, familiar with them it's like a link if you ever see a link that you click on on youtube and it doesn't look like a normal link we can actually track when somebody clicks on it so if it's for manitoba tourism i can see how many people clicked off that video to 
the Travel Manitoba website, right? So all of a sudden, if the video is 10,000 views, but a thousand people clicked off to that link, I'm like, oh, that's, that's good. People actually care to engage, right? It's sweet to see a video get a lot of views though too, right? It is sweet to see a video get a bunch of views. And, uh, but then it's, uh, yeah, no, I don't know. There's, there's, there's different angles to it, but the comments, the comments are dangerous too. Cause <laughs> if you take the negative comments and you got to take the positive comments and vice versa. So it's, but it, it, you know, sometimes you get some heartwarming comments that are like, Hey, I, I went, a comment just the other day was, Hey, my son watches your videos. We went to the fishing lodge because of that. And we made some amazing family memories. And I'm like, that, yeah. that's as good as it gets right there. You know? So it sounds like to me and not to play counselor, but it's, it's literally, you just want to make an impact. It's no, di but because the, the, the genre or whatever you want is changed, it becomes different. For example, when you were a guide, yeah, you probably love that same feeling where there was a kid and, you know, that kid's family that had caught in this fishing trip, they'd never caught a fish, but that kid caught the biggest fish of their life. And you know what I mean? And, and yeah. the tougher it was to get that kid to catch the fish, the more rewarding it was for you that, you know, the parents reaction to seeing that kid get. So it's, you, you just want to make an impact. And yeah. I think, I think that's normal. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's just, I, I think back to, Winnipeg boat show where I'm talking to you. And then sometimes I'll see a kid come talk to me and it's just like, I get goosebumps. Cause it's just like, you know, am, am I that person? And I still am striving to be, you know, that, that person that, that can, that can make an impact. And I think it'll be a lifelong chase of that, but uh, it's crazy to be here talking with you right now. Right. It's, 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 a, it's a surreal, it's a surreal thing. Cause I still feel like that little kid. I still get like all jittery when I go into a tackle store. Like it's, it's just, I don't know. It, uh, it doesn't, it changes a bit, but. But I don't think you're any different. You're just willing to admit it. Like you're just honest in that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause uh, I mean, I, I feel the same with many people that I grew up watching and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But, and I, and I feel that I don't think anybody ever gets used to people coming up to them in public situation. Like it is a weird, like, and yeah. it's so changed, dude. Like when you came up 15 years ago, like it was like people wanted to talk to you and spend like you. I don't know. I don't remember our interaction, but I'm sure you would have spent a bit of time yeah. as much time as as the situation would allow. Now yeah. people come up and they don't even want to talk to you. They just want a selfie, selfie with you. Yeah. Like literally, boom, you feel violated. Um, but I, I think most people, you know, in that situation don't feel like they are that guy. I just think they think like I have an impact on, I can have an impact on this kid and it, it should be positive. I mean, yeah. you would hope. Um, yeah. So along the way, long story short, you know, you start shooting, you, you start shooting more stuff yourself, you're vlogging and now you're you got a very successful YouTube channel yourself and you're doing stuff with meat eater. How does all of this happen? Yeah, I don't, I, I think the craziest thing is you never know who's watching the video when you put it online. Yeah. And that always, that always shocks me because there could be people from overseas. There can be people anywhere really, right? You put it online and yeah, there's X number of people that comment or will message you, but then there's people that just watch it and go on their way and, and whatever. And uh, you know, my, my wife doesn't consume much hunting and fishing, but she media, but she, uh, she started watching Meat Eater on Netflix and just binged watch all of it. And I'm like, cool, it's a show we can watch together. I, I, I love Meat Eater. Stephen Rennell has done a lot for the outdoor industry. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, that happened. And then all of a sudden, you know, one day, I guess three springs ago, get a message from Miles Nolte, who was one of the fishing guys at Meat Eater at the time. And he, and he was like, hey, like, we've been watching what you're doing. We'd like to, you know, work together in some in some way. So that kind of started a relationship with them. I've got a, a series that I've done for, I guess I've done four seasons of it. I think the fifth season's coming out this winter. They're like mini seasons, but uh, producing content for, for the media YouTube channel. And yeah, it was just, uh, uh, it, it's just, it, it was a, an excuse to make content in a little bit of a different way as well. So I try yeah. to, I try to emulate the media or storytelling side a little bit more, a little more documentary style and less YouTube style. Um, and then I just got, I got to connect with some cool people, right. To go fishing with Steven and I got to go out to, to devil's Lake with him and do an ice fishing trip. Um, and just, you know, sometimes 
you probably feel this a little bit. Sometimes YouTube can be a little bit lonely because you're in your own yeah. bubble, you know, a bit. You're 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 editing by yourself, you're uploading, and then you're on to the next video. It's it sometimes can be pretty by yourself, especially if you're editing and shooting them by yourself. So just to get connected with other people and it's inspiring and uh yeah, I don't know. That it's it's been uh it's been a cool experience working with them. And uh they their focus is hunting, so it's cool to be one of the guys helping with the fishing side of things. Right. So what yeah. is their plan for fishing? That's a great question. I I'm not sure what their plan is. Yeah. Meat eaters just grown to something, something so big. And uh, you know, now they're doing more with uh, the culinary side is something they've pushed into big. Um, if you look at their, their YouTube channel now, they've got all sorts of contributors from, from all over the place. So yeah, it's uh, it's quite the crew of people. And, and it's funny because you look at the YouTube comments and it's uh everyone's like oh where's steve we want to watch steve you know we're here for steve <laughs> it's like well you know they, they built a different team but the cool thing about that is to get my youtube videos in front of that audience is it's not the same audience that's necessarily watching my youtube videos yeah. so sometimes i feel like i'm the opening act for steve right people are there to see steve i kind of get pushed in front of them so maybe i can you know get a few more people to watch the videos off of that and some people are excited and some people are like hey give us steve but uh I don't know. It's just another outlet. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's challenged me in a different way. Right. So has that driven big traffic to your channel or, or is it, is it just exposure that you get into there? Like, how do you judge? I mean, you've been doing it a few years now. You must have a pretty yeah. good assessment of how it's going. Yeah. Um, it definitely, yeah. Brings people into my YouTube channel that hadn't heard of it through meat eater. And uh, yeah, I think, I think meat eaters may be a little more mainstream too. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Definitely put me in front of a different audience. So, but uh, and and they're so storytelling based that it, when I pick ideas for the mediator stuff, it's a little bit different as well. Sometimes I'll pick something more story based than fishing based. So I got some unique ones coming out this winter. I went out with like an Aboriginal commercial fisherman and got to pull nets for walleye and stuff on Lake Winnipeg, uh, and just huh. just unique stuff. I did another one where I went to one of the biggest ice fishing derbies in Manitoba. There's like two three thousand people there and we documented that experience and that that's a pretty funny episode in itself but yeah just just focusing a little more on on story for some of that stuff because that's what meat eater like when you look at the crew of meat eater and steve himself they're writers like they're journalists yeah foremost and they just happen to do the, the video stuff now and that's been a big part but yeah it's uh it's a cool crew of people yeah yeah it's i mean they're storytellers and yeah. and that's I think whether it's TV, whether it's YouTube, whether it's whatever, that's who always wins. You know what I mean? Like it, in the long run, like the people that take the time to tell the story, like it, it's Jerry McInnes, God rest his soul. One of the most amazing things that like everybody that ever worked with him, or it, like repeatedly, he'd just be like, does that tell the story? Is that helping yeah. tell the story? And when you think about things like that, you know, you just become better at whatever. Be I mean, that's what people want to hear these these stories, these tales. Yeah. But I'll be honest. Before we started recording this, my wife said, "Who are you recording with this week?" And I yeah. told her who I was recording with, and and she's like, "Is he on the Elite Series?" And I'm like, "No, no." And she's like, "Is he fishing in my lap?" And I'm like, "No, no, he doesn't do that either." And He's I tried not very to good at tournaments. Yeah. I tried to explain what you do for a living, but dude. You do a lot of different things for a living. I mean, so you've got to populate a YouTube channel. You have to populate your stuff on media and you've built a lodge. Yeah, I, I built, I decided to build a lodge, which was not something that I ever had planned. That that's last year was the craziest year of my life. And I don't have any regrets, but uh, basically what happened is I had two buddies that bought a piece of property on Lake of the Woods on an island down the lake. Um, and my buddy was bugging me. He's like, Oh, you should, you should buy in on it. You should buy in on it. We're going to put a little trapper's cabin on it. It'll be a little getaway. So this goes back to the topic. If you never know who's watching your YouTube videos. So we saw the piece of property. I talked to my wife about it and she's like, yeah, we can build it. But she's like, we should just make sure it stays a little trapper's cabin. Like whatever we've, we've got expenses. We have a baby on the way. Sam was expecting in June. So I'm like, yeah, no, it's all good. So we, we bought, the, I bought in on the property three ways and uh, we snowmobiled down in the winter. And I made the first video that went on the YouTube channel. It's like, Hey, we bought this property. We want to build an outpost cabin. We were going to think that it, like Airbnb it or have it open to the public was the plan. So I put that video online and just 
like I said, you don't know who's watching. All of a sudden, architect or designer from, from North Bay, Ontario texts me and he's like, hey, can I help you out? I want to design something. So he designed something that's way bigger. And then we get a message from Dakota Lithium and it's like, hey, we're going to help you out with lithium batteries, right? And then they give us enough batteries that like, well, we could have a pretty good solar system on there. And at that point, it just like snowballed and got gigantic and uh, it turned into a way bigger undertaking than we could have planned. I've made like videos along the way, like little chapters. Yeah. And I think we're on chapter 23. So that's 23 videos I wasn't expecting to make <laughs> this last year. So we broke ground. My, my baby boy, Hannon, my firstborn, was born on June 10th. And June 12th, these guys from North Bay came down, drove down to donate their time and to help break ground on our cabin. So two days after my baby was born, I'm like, hey, Sam, I love you. Hannah and I love you. I got to go. I got to go help a little bit. So uh, that was that was really tough because, you know, newborn and building a cabin. So anyways, fast forward to now, the baby's still alive. The cabin's built um, and we have guests in it right now. So it, I never expected myself to be a lodge owner, but it turned into a couple of things. It turned into, uh, you know, a different outlet. And I think, I don't know if we were talking about this, this on, on film as well, but just to make different types of videos and to experiment what works on YouTube and what doesn't. And I'm like, are people going to like videos with me building a cabin and not fishing? And some people, some people come up to me and they're like, Jay, I don't really care for your fishing videos, but I like the cabin build videos. I'm like, okay, that's great. Yeah. You don't have to like fishing videos. But uh, so that's been a cool process. Now we have it documented. It's called Uncle Mark's Outpost. We named it after Sam's uncle. That was the, like the general contractor on the project. He became an uncle to everyone there. And now we've got a little oasis on Lake of the Woods. It'll be a place I can bring my family, film videos in the future. And, you know, we want it to be profitable, but we want to leave an impact with it as well. So, you know, eventually I think some sort of fishing camps will be ran through there or give it to, you know, we're already talking about, you know, opening it up to a, a family that hasn't had the opportunity to go to a fishing camp and give them a week there. That's something that'll be happening shortly. Um, so yeah, just something that I learned a lot about building. It, it met new people along the way and, and uh, man, there was people that watched the videos and wanted to help from all over the place. Yeah. So it, it's been wild. So the people that are booking it are any of them viewers that booked it or is it just, yeah. no, I would say a decent amount are people that kind of got pulled into the, pulled into the YouTube playlist of that, of those videos. And so we've had people we've uh, not fully booked, but you know, kind of half booked, which is, which is all right. We got some time for ourselves. So, you know, I'll be headed down there, you know, and then coming weeks to pre-fish for the big bass tournament. So I got to stay at the outpost and have a sweet place to stay. And, uh, but yeah, I never expected to be a lodge owner. I was just like, man, be, but it's, it's not a lodge. It's more so an outpost. Um, but it's, it's a little more luxurious. I guess it's a nice outpost. When people think out, outpost, they think pretty, pretty rough, but we had a lot of very talented people working on it. And I, I guess another reason is just, you know, you talked about doing more than the YouTube channel is who knows where YouTube's going to be in five to 10 years. Right. Yeah. Like um, there was a time not too long ago where a lot of hunting YouTube creators, their videos got demonetized. Scary. And if you look at the trajectory there is a chance that if hunting gets shut down first, fishing could be next. Like, I don't, I don't want to be negative, but like, who knows? Right. I, I don't think that's going to happen. I think fishing is safe for a long time, but, but what do you think about that? I hope it's safe for a long time. I mean, yeah. but I, I would have thought that hunting would have been safe. You, you know what I mean? Like I yeah. get, I, I, it's weird that, I mean, it, I don't think I, I don't understand how YouTube should want to shut down hunting at all because you, yeah. you have to make the choice. You know what I mean? Like at least on regular TV, you can argue with somebody that didn't want to watch that watched it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like there's a whole other argument where if that person that watched it knew what they were watching and like yeah. do what they were really eating. And I think that they've realized that what they do is probably barbaric, more barbaric. Yeah, than the hunting. yeah exactly. That's yeah. a whole other argument, but. But what I'm saying is in my head, I can see why hunting has a harder time on TV versus like YouTube. You have to go to the channel. Like, yeah. So I don't you know. Click on it. Yeah. I don't know. But but I mean, like most of those things, they're the decisions usually made by somebody who has very little experience in in the outdoors yeah. and, and doesn't understand. You know, you spend any time with people and they understand that process and what's going on. They become very 
you know, defensive of it and they understand it. But to me, I would hope fishing safe, but, but I feel very much like you where I'm like, who knows? Because well, you, yeah, there was no warning. Like it wasn't like all of a sudden, some of them were, it was like, they woke up one morning and like the who's who of everybody was just demonetized. And it didn't matter who you sent an email to or how many contacts or subs you thought you had. Nobody cares. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, and then that's the thing too is just like I love YouTube videos, making YouTube videos. I love the freedom of it, yeah. And it's something I want to do for the rest of my life. But who knows? Maybe something happens and I'm not able to, or maybe for some reason I get burnt out in a way that I didn't expect. Well, that's kind of why it's just I, I don't want to have all my eggs in one basket because that makes me a little bit nervous too. So that's why you know building the cabin and uh, you know the whole catch and cook the fish batter thing so, like that. So it's gonna get into you also have yeah. other businesses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean yeah i started a fish batter company i got one of our first bags sitting beside me that sits in my office but uh yeah i mean i'm cooking fish a lot of the time right and incorporating into videos you know catch and cook videos are such a such a yeah uh, uh, that's the term it was called catch and cook and my buddy and i were sitting in an ice shack and we're just like how does nobody have the business name catch and cook like how, how does nobody have that it's got to be but it wasn't. So my friend, Josh is a foodie and he had a recipe and uh, yeah, long story short, we started a batter company, but yeah, like I said, that was just a way to diversify and something fun and something that stretched me. I never expected I'd be learning about food, health and safety and distribution and sales reps and but all that stuff. Riddle me this, like, how does it go from, because everybody has an idea in an ice hut or in a bass yeah. boat or, <laughs> yeah. or a duck blind, yeah. wherever everybody sits with a buddy and says, well, why doesn't this, how does it go from that ice hut to what it is today? Like, did, like, did you just all of a sudden invest all of your time in that? Or was your partner more active in that? Like, how do you go from all the stuff you're balancing as it is to, yeah, I found time to make a food company. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, I don't know where the time came from and that that's, I, I don't, I, I just never, I, I kind of, I'm really bad at sitting still. Like vacation isn't really a thing for me. I just like, I'm always vibrating and have to do, I have this conversation with my, with my wife all the time. I just am very bad at sitting still. So for me, it was just like in the evenings here and there, it's like, oh, here, we found a mill that can make it. We send them the recipe. Oh, we found a warehouse that can warehouse it. Okay. We found a company that can ship it. And so it's, uh, you know, you kind of just make time, right? It's it's like whatever you want to make priority. So right now it's probably like, you know, 80% of my time is YouTube videos and 20% of my time is catch and cook and, you know, but you make time if you want to do it with anything, right? It's just uh, sometimes I wish I had less going on, but then other times it's like, I never want to be the guy that's sitting still. I'm, like, oh, I'm bored. So I'd, I'd rather be busier than not busy enough. I feel like you're the same way with everything you got going on. Oh yeah. And there's also the like, uh, I don't know about you, but in my head, well, what if somebody else makes it? <laughs> catch you know and what? Cook that, and, and like, that would drive you absolutely crazy. Yeah. Well, and, and that's the thing is I want everyone to be successful, but I realize there's a lot of people coming up and trying to do, trying to do YouTube, maybe trying to not trying to do fish batter. It doesn't seem like there's much competition and in, in the market currently, um, there just isn't that many options is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like there's, there's two or three that have been the same for many years in Canada. Um, yeah. I, I think it's just, uh, I'm living my dream. I think it's safe to say you're living your dream too. Oh, and I, I don't want to take my foot off the gas because you know, who, who knows, right. There's, there's a lot of people wanting to do what we do. And I just, I want to, I want to keep cranking it out. I want to keep doing it. I want I want to live the dream as long as possible. Right. Um, but, it's also now a balancing act and, and with a family, right. It's, it's, it's tough when you're traveling and trying to balance all that. So that's something that I'm struggle with every day, but it's uh, you know, it's, it's, I don't think I'll ever have it figured out. I don't think, I think if you, I think it's very tough to ever figure out the work-life balance. Yeah. Especially when you love what you do, you know, I think it's, it's easy if, you know, there's other things that are easy to shut off, but you like, I feel the same way in all of the crap I get to do. Like, it doesn't feel like work, right? It feels like, you know, no. And it's not something like, I mean, when I started doing the bass stuff, people were like, oh, well, that's a full-time job. It, well, 
yeah, but I don't want to leave my other job and I don't, you know what I mean? Like there's, yeah. there, there's, I just think life's about our opportunities and some of them you'll do for a very long time. And some of them, and some of them that you think you'll do forever are shorter than you, you know, you know what I mean? You never know. Um, yeah. So what is your long-term, do you have a long-term goal or is your goal just to, just to live life to the fullest? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't have a long-term goal. Um, I just want to keep, I, I think like videos I, I do, I do love the side businesses and all that. And it, it, it uh, I guess keeps my brain working in different ways, but like, I love the creative side. I love the videos. And, and what I love about YouTube is just those memories are cataloged forever. I can go look back and I can see uh, the, the day I proposed to my wife while we were musky fishing. And I can go back and I can see fishing with my grandpa who's 90 years old and all those things. And it's just like, uh, I could get emotional talking about that, but it's, it's just, those are such special memories. And the fact I'm able to make a living is, is, is fantastic. But like just having all that stuff cataloged and there's something about video that is just so special as well. Um, I just want to keep, you know, cataloging my life. And I think it'll be pretty cool for my boy to watch it when he's 20 or 30. Maybe he'll be embarrassed by a lot of it. Who knows? But how cool it'd be when you're 80 years old to look back and watch season one of facts of fishing and be like, this is what I did. This is, I did this and that and like live life to the fullest and made an impact like that. Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's a lot to be said for that. I, I want to just keep pushing of what's possible with, with YouTube fishing. I think if there's a season in my life that allows for it, I'd love to try to do daily videos for an amount of time. I'm not sure if one of my favorite YouTubers is Casey Neistat. He did daily videos for like three uh -huh. years straight. I think there's just something so cool about that and so raw. And maybe there'll be a time in my life where I can do that for half a year, a year, who knows, right? But just trying to push what's possible and, uh, you know, make an impact on the way and teach. I like, I like teaching people too, because it's, it's good to take people on adventures, but the teaching stuff is like, I don't know who you're, who is your figure that, that got you into fishing when you grew up? On um, my dad, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think yeah. pretty traditional, my dad, but, but, I, but I also think like a lot of it was it, because my dad introduced my brother and sister to fishing just as much as me. And, the, and yeah. they, you know, they still fish just because I fish really, yeah. to be honest, like, you know, like, um, they they weren't, but from the first day I fished, I, 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 that's where I think there's this weird thing that's, and it's, and I, I feel it, especially with the outdoors. And I think and maybe I'm just thinking it's because the industry I work in, but like fishing from the moment I, it didn't matter what influence, you know, my dad influenced me, but then I took at one point I was showing my dad stuff, you know what yeah. I mean? And, but I, I was, just, and you see that in the outdoors, there's certain people who like, it's almost like it's in your genes. Like you have to, my daughter's the exact same. I don't hunt. I've grown up around a lot of hunting, but I just never, my family didn't hunt. I'm nothing yeah. against it, but just didn't dude. When I realized how addicted my daughter was to the outdoors was the first time I took her somewhere to shoot a bow and cool. we're, and here's, and you'll recognize this because you're an outdoors person and, and it might not be a bow to you. It might be something totally different, but she's driving home. We're driving home in the car and I listened to her and she's watching a video of her shooting the bow. And I think she's watching it because she's, you know, trying to critique it or whatever, but she's holding the phone. She's not even watching. She's just holding it. And I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm listening to that sound. And I'm like, what's that sound? And she's like, that sound when the bow, like, let the, and it's a sound that like, if you don't have that, if you don't have that weird, yeah, yeah. I need to do, you don't, you don't even hear that sound. It's yeah. just similar to sounds that we hear on the water. You know what I mean? Like yeah, the, the you identify with, but you don't, other people don't even hear them. They just happen. Yeah. So I think yeah. there's a, why do you think you're that much into fishing? Like, do, do you think you were uh, always going to be this way? I don't know. I mean, like, I think there's definitely that gateway of, you know, my grandpa taking me fishing. Yeah. The one for me. So I think there's that gateway. I think, like you said, you need to be wired a certain way. And I think that's just my brain never stops spinning. And that's what I like about fishing. It's different every time. And I love the, the technical aspects of it. Um, I think that's why I like it so much. But yeah, I think it's also just like, getting that person in. And that's, I, I guess for making videos too, it's just like you had your dad. I had my grandpa. What if, what if I didn't have that person? Mm -hmm. Would I still, would I have, would it have been, would it have been then a, a fishing show later? And it's just like, if there's any chance to be that person in someone's life on the teaching side of things, 
then I think that's a, that's a cool angle to look at it as well. So, yeah. Yeah. No, that's one of the most gratifying feelings, you know, whether it be through TV, YouTube, like to have people come up and be like, I caught this fish because. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's just, it's cool. It's just a very cool. um, And it's a way to, you know, and I think that's what everyone wants. They want to impact the world around them. I would think, I mean, if you don't feel like you're, and I, I think that's how life you want to, you know, you want to impact the people around you too. Like even on smaller, like whether it be friends, your relationship with your wife, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he, most successful marriages want to keep their partner happy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's part of, uh, of wanting to, you know, impact the world. Um, so who inspires you? Whether it be hmm. YouTube or outside of YouTube in your, in your regular life, like, like, when I say someone inspires you, I'm sure there's more than one person's name that pops in your head, but who inspires you? I mean, there's, there's different, there's different layers to that. Cause there's people that inspire me as creatives. Yeah. And, but they might not, I mean, like this, this might sound harsh. They, I, I don't know them on a personal level, so I don't, I don't necessarily know their, their morals and all that stuff. If like, it's like a musician, it's like, I really like their music. They might not be the best person, you know what I mean? Because you never yeah. really know the person. So there's people that I know on a closer level, uh, you know, friends and family that it, it inspire me. And I'm just like, I like those those personality traits. I like their patience. I like their tenacity, Dif- different things, right? Um, but then you look at the YouTube side and I'm just like, oh, I really like Casey Neistat. I really like Peter McKinnon. Um, just some, some YouTubers that have, have done things on a unique level there. Um, yeah, definitely Aaron inspired me a lot when I was starting off just because he set the bar, he set the bar for, for a lot of YouTube stuff. And I, I didn't necessarily know at the start where this was all going to lead me. So I don't know. I think I'm inspired by through a lot of, a lot of different, uh, things. I think the Linders are probably a pretty part of it. Like, and, and, oh, and this is something that I'm trying to navigate to is just like the lenders did such a good job of incorporating their faith into what they do. And, you know, whether you're a believer or not, it's just like that, that's a core fundamental of who I am. And it's just like, how do I, how do I weave that into what I do? Cause like, if you watch a lenders show, he's got the devotional at the end of the episode. And it's like, that's, that's pretty cool. And I know I, there's some stories of him standing his ground where I think there's a network that said, if you have your devotional at the end, we're going to pull your show. And I, I, I think he just said, okay, pull the show. And it's just like, that is standing firm on your beliefs. So yeah, I'm trying to, trying to figure out that he's uh, though, those guys are, are pretty special and I've never met Al and he's really very high on my list. I, yeah, I would, I would love to meet Al and I, he's not far away. I might have to just make, make the trip, but uh yeah, he's he's done some some pretty cool things. Yeah, he's. I mean, I think because we're both Canadian, Azumi's always Azumi. You know what I mean? Like, oh, there's. It, but Al Linder was my guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like growing up, that was like the the Linders. You know, and here's one of the coolest things that happened in my life, and I've been lucky enough to meet Al a few times over the years. But but and I did not know this. Never knew this until probably ten years ago or so. So he had always been. The Linders were always, always the show that I, you know, yeah. related to. I think a lot of Northern folks are like yeah. that. But um, I found out like 10 years. So I literally, we, I mean, this, my show started as like the 60 second fishing reel. Then it went into facts fishing. I had no idea, whatever. So facts fishing yeah. just sounded good together. That's it. They were little short tips. Made sense. The original name of In Fisherman for the first two years was fact sufficient. I had no idea. Like I had no, I, so yeah, to me bit, yeah. at that point, when, when Al told me, I was like, that's one of the coolest things on earth because like, for me, you know, it's, yeah. like I had already, I'm already sick of the name fact sufficient. It just went, I, I wish I had called it something way more creative. Trust me, but we're stuck with <laughs> it, but it's cool that there's that kind of connection with them. And they're, they're incredible people. All of them, all yeah. of them really really incredible i can't believe you've not met him being as close as you are i know i know i i I need i need to make that uh make that happen but uh yeah definitely definitely an inspiration and he's uh man talking about doing the same thing again and again think about how many fishing episodes that guy has filmed and that that's that's impressive and our 
was written and, and all of that. It's, uh, you know. And, and his, the one thing I'll say about the Linders and all of them have it. Um, and I think everybody who really makes it in this sport has it, but it's that they just want to catch the next one. You know what I yeah. mean? Like the few tournaments that I fished against Al, when I came to KBI and Randy Lake a few yeah. times, Al was in it and dude, you watch him and dude is like as driven as anybody, like the speed that he keeps the pace that he keeps up, but it's only driven by one thing. And, and it can't be, yeah. it's just, it's just, he loves to fish. So yeah. it's, uh, it's like something he has to do is fishing something you have to do. I, I think so. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's so weird now because people are like, well, do you fish without a camera? And I'm like, I, I don't, I actually started fishing without a camera for the first time recently because we're living uh we're spending the summers at, at my in-laws lake house and uh, my baby boy will wake up at six in the morning and so we got the boat in the water so we go out and it's just me and him he's a year old he doesn't really know what's going on but we go fish so that's like the first time i've started fishing without a camera and it's 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 pretty relaxing but normally when there's cameras i'm, I'm always filming and uh you're a little more tightly. I don't know about you. For me, I'm a little more tightly wound when there's cameras. There's more that I'm paying attention to. It's not as relaxing as just fishing. So I love fishing. I also feel an obligation to have a camera rolling all the time. Yeah. So something I battle with too, because I'm just like, yeah. what if I catch the biggest muskie of my life and the camera isn't rolling? And I was, you know, so. That was but, where yeah. I was going to go next. I was yeah. going to say, do you battle? Because I do. I mean, like, yeah. we'll go somewhere and, and be, be, the best way to catch them is just to not bring cameras. It's almost yeah. guarantees you're going to hammer them. Yeah. Um, but it's almost like you're like, oh, I kind of wasted them. I didn't, you know, but it's not wasting them, like especially the way you're doing it, taking your, your son out. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's yeah, yeah. precious time that you'll never trust me. You will never regret any moment you've spent with your kids ever. Yeah. Um, um, you know, even the stuff that. It's so funny because you guys are probably going through so much of it right now, but like my kids are 19 and 16, right? So, but I remember my kids when they were your kids age, you know, yeah. and I remember all the things and like me and Sarah were talking the other day and it's like for like three years, our son had these horrible night terrors and he would come like, you'd just hear his feet. <laughs> he'd come run down the hall and jump into our bed. And it was just like three years of like, here he comes again. He's going to wake us yeah. up in the middle of the night and da, da, da. And there was times where you were just like, oh, I just wish he would sleep. Do you know how much we would pay literally to hear yeah, yeah. those feet coming down the hallway now? Like uh, it's yeah. it's it's so weird how things like that, that that are a drain on you and seem yeah. like they're tough at the time. It's all the crap that you're going to regret, not regret, yeah. but want to, like, I mean, I love my son as he is right now. It's, you know, he's, there's so much there's cool things we get to experience together now, but time is limited yeah. i mean uh yeah. last week's guest said it right man you can't buy time and uh i feel like you figured that out early on though in life like i just feel like for what whatever reason you just seem to be one of those people who who values experience and hmm. my well, that I'm, right yeah no I, like i just it, and, and sometimes it reminds me when I read the comments, but uh, I just know my dad has made comments about, oh yeah, it's like, it's, it's never, never time wasted fishing together. Even if we're not catching fish, it's never time yeah. wasted fishing together. And this would be, you know, maybe why I don't fish more tournaments partially because I don't do great in tournaments that that could be a big part of it. But the other part could be just, when I get to take my dad on a fishing trip or take my grandpa or my wife or whatever it is, that's just like, and, and I can call it work. That is the wildest thing, right? If, if I'm fishing tournament fishing by myself, it, it feels, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's just, that's very serious angling. It's, it's on a different level. You're a little less, you know, if I had to pre-fish by myself, it's, it's less fun fishing by yourself. So for me, I'm like, I mean, I want to bring friends and family on my trips. I don't like filming by myself. I want to share those memories. Yeah, there's still a work aspect. I need to make a video. But if I can make a living with taking a buddy out fishing or whatever, th there's something cool about that. So yeah, I've, I've always valued that a lot. And I, I realized that I won't be able to fish with my dad forever. Um, 
or my grandpa. I took my grandpa on a flying fishing trip last summer. He's 89, 90 years old. And I'm like, this just needs to happen. So we, we got a plane, chartered it for one day out of Kenora and we did a one day flying fishing trip. And I brought my camera guy, Brandon along. I'm like, I don't know what this will turn into. Maybe it'll be memories for me. Maybe it'll turn up on YouTube, but I'm just like, you got to do it now. Cause you know, who knows, right? Who knows? If you ask me, dude, a video like that is a lot more impactful on your life and everybody's life than any Walmart challenge or any catching the giantest fish with a Snoopy rod. And no offense to people that are doing that stuff yeah, out there. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a crazy world, but that's what I mean. That's I think that that for you to how old are you? Thirty one. For you to value that the way you do at thirty one. I mean, because a lot, dude. There's a lot like. The thing that you said at the beginning where you look at those videos back and you're like, I I'm kind of embarrassed of my original videos yeah. in today. I honestly believe, and nobody else in middle admit it, but I'll admit that's life, dude. Like yeah. I'm embarrassed of 20 year old me. I'm embarrassed yeah. of 30 year old. Like there's things you say and things you feel and things, you know what I mean? Like you just, yeah. you should eat. But I, th I think just like, you should feel that way with your videos. I think you should feel that way a little bit in life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I mean, who wants to be that guy that wants to be 20 over and over again? You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're just like, hate everything else. It's just, you should evolve and, and grow as a person. And you've just chosen to do it in front of a camera, which is going to be cool. Which like for you to see the payback of, of your son and you, you know, all the proposal and all those like I, I have to tell my kids that like the real value yeah. isn't even for you the real value is yeah for your son you know what I mean 30 40 yeah. years from now that just having the ability to go back and look at that and um it might backfire on you a few times when you're like oh, well yeah, sure. you can't do that what about that video I saw you do <laughs> yeah oh yeah no there's there's definitely the share of embarrassing moments but uh I don't know the, the guy you see on camera is basically the, the guy you uh the guy in real life and uh no i don't know it's uh i'm just i'm just trying to enjoy i'm just trying to enjoy enjoy uh every video i make and you know there's times where i'm driving to the lake and there's so many things stressing me out and i'm just like i just have to shake my head and be like 16 year old jay would be losing his mind right now like yeah anytime i hop in a float plane because i feel like a float plane is just like so many people when they think of a canadian fishing trip they're hopping on a float plane every time i got on a float plane i'm like I could not take this for granted. I could not uh -huh. take this for granted because, you know, who knows? How few people, like when you start talking, like, and I, I'm sure you live where you live. I'm sure you've been on a lot more than me, but I've been on a lot of float planes in my life. Yeah. Like it's, and I, it's weird. You use that as an example because I always talk about that. I'm like, most people don't know how smooth the landing in a float plane can be. You know what yeah. I mean? Most people, yeah. it is, it's a pretty, wild thing but you know that that's that's life though too because everybody tries to, everybody it's weird how you you know what i mean if you grow up beside niagara falls you don't appreciate think it's that it, yeah. big a deal you don't appreciate it and and i think that you know that that's true in a lot of people's circles so um man i i i have a few more questions for you why do yeah. you think you so if you and this might be a really hard question for you to answer why do you think there's so many people that are trying to become successful on YouTube and, and some, and, and a lot of those people will say, well, you need to start in 2008 and 2009, 2010, you know what I mean? When the first, but dude, if I look at your, your success has come, I mean, how many years have you been on YouTube now? I would say I was doing it seriously around like 2017, 2018. So I guess five, six years now or. Yeah, so that's a cool. short period of time. Generally, you, you know, yeah. there's a lot of people saying I didn't get into YouTube till this, and so it'll never be. How have you become successful? I, I think <laughs> part of it too. I, I think, I think sometimes uh, people will see a YouTube channel, or they'll see a musician, for example, and they'll be like, "Wow, they they made it overnight," you know, or they got you know. But the thing is, like, when I think about my career, I'm like, no, it. My career started in twenty. My career started in 2009 when I became a fishing guide, because if I wasn't a fishing guide, I wouldn't know how to drive a boat. And if I didn't drive a boat, I wouldn't have been a guide. If I wouldn't have been a guide, I wouldn't have, you know, gotten better taking fishing pictures and just like, there's all these pieces to it. And then I started filming videos in 2011 for Aaron. So it's just like, I think, 
I think, uh, well, th this isn't exactly answering your question, but I think like to, to be successful in it, I don't think it's an overnight thing. I think you need to be like, not looking one, two years in advance. I think you need to be looking at your 10 years in advance, right? I think you can do a lot in a year, but I think like you need to look longer term. I think when I started, I obviously had a guiding background, uh, which was fortunate. I had the camera background, which allowed me, I didn't need to hire a camera guy um, at the start. Um, so those things helped. Why are so many people doing it? I think is it's, it's so accessible. Anyone can post a video now. And I think people, uh, it's really easy to compare yourself to somebody else. So it's like, I can catch really big fish. I can make YouTube videos. It's like, okay, I know there's a lot of people that can catch really big fish. Can you catch that really big fish in front of a camera? That's, that's the next thing. Can you make sure your audio is good? Can you, so all that, um, I think it, it seems attainable, which it is attainable for people if they're just willing to put in, put in those years. Cause I have, uh, I have a buddy that came and interned, interned for me from Montreal, his name's Zach. And he, uh, he's been working really hard on his YouTube channel. He's young though. He's like, you know, I 22 maybe or something. And he's been working on it for two years. I'm like, dude, he'll, he'll talk to me. He's like, man, things aren't growing as fast as I want to like, talk to me in like five to 10 years. Right. Yeah. Because that, that's just, you know, from facts of fishing the the weather network clips to the TV show, that was a number of years. Right. And it's just like, sometimes people don't always see the, the work put in, but I, I think it's very possible. The thing too is with YouTube, you need to pretty much go all in with it. It's it's yeah. tough to part time it, right? Um, it's really tough to part time it. So you kind of have to take that leap. For me, it was easier because I had the production company. So I was doing corporate work and whatever. I had an editor that is on payroll full time. So he was able to, when he had gaps in his work, he could edit some of my YouTube videos when I started making them, right? So it allowed me to make more videos. So there's there's just, there's not one set way to do it. Um, I think there is something to be said for just taking a leap at a certain point. Yeah. Uh, and I think people sometimes get scared of that risk. That's life. If it's anything you want to do, there's always a, there's always that fear before the success of it. So it's just like the guys that go all in on fishing tournaments and are sleeping in the back of their truck. Right. It's just like people see Palnick winning. They don't see him sleeping in the back of his Toyota. Right. Like that's such a classic example, but it's just like, you know, it's, uh, there's, there's dues to be paid and, yeah. Yeah, I think there's lots of room for people to do it, like I said, but I think you need to be willing to a lot of late nights. There was a lot of times where maybe I wasn't hanging out with my friends. I was editing by myself till three in the morning yeah. and then going home in the next video. And it's it's just, it's funny. And you you probably get this all the time, but it's like, so you fish all the time. You fish seven days a week. And it's like, well, no, not exactly. I get to fish a ton. But for every day of fishing, there's probably at least a half day or more of, of office work that goes with it. Obviously, you and I are blessed to have people that edit a lot of the stuff for us. But I know my buddy Clayton Schick that makes YouTube videos, uh, my buddy Sam Sobey in the States, they edit their own videos and it's a grind, you know, yeah. but that's what you got to do sometimes to make it work, right? If that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. So it's, it's just a matter of how hard are you willing to work, right? I think, dude, I th and I, if you, the people who listen to this podcast have heard this over and over again, but I say, I think that's at the end of the day, there's two principles that get you where you want to go, whatever it is, whether it's the, it doesn't matter what you, it's your work ethic and being a decent person to people. Cause at the end of the day, like there's so many more talented people than people, you know what I mean? But talent fades. Yeah. Talent gets, if that dude's a jackass, you're waiting for that talent. To, like in every sport, you can look and be like that dude. Once he gets a half a second slower, nobody's going to even listen to him. It, yeah. it, there's a lot. But as long as you are willing to work, because when you think of the people that you work with and the people, you, it's people that you get along with. Like when you, when you're like, I need somebody for this job for travel Manitoba or whatever, yeah. you think right away, okay, well, who is going to do the job? and going to work their ass off and it's going to be decent. You know what I mean? A good yeah. person. To hang. That's the first thought. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, it's not like, you know, you're not going to hire somebody who's everything's going to be out of focus. I get it. You can't just be nice, yeah. work hard and suck. Yeah. You have to figure out how to you do have to it. Have some but... skills. Well, it's, it's when I used to photograph weddings, 
then you know if you the, the couple would come up afterwards or the parents would be like you did a great job and i'm like you haven't even seen the photos yet they might suck you don't even know <laughs> but if, if you're you know friendly and you treat everyone with love and you know that's that's 90 percent of it and and you know how it is it's it's who you know how you treat them and yeah there needs to be some skill there but uh i think that's that's lower on the totem pole yeah hard work and be a decent person and dude i i think you you are definitely that well thank you i think this is it dude i think that's all i got for you i don't know we can do i i honestly could talk to you for days because hey do you do you ask people to like comment and subscribe anymore have you just I, you just I left don't. it to... i do have some questions i have some youtube questions for you oh let's do this okay you, youtube shorts how has youtube uh -huh. shorts affected your channel because i saw your channel blow up i want to know your overall thoughts on yeah, well, we'll dig more into it. I just want to hear your thoughts first on it. Oh, YouTube Shorts is huge. I mean, it's been huge for for this channel. It's been, you know, it's been the number one driver. I mean, and and um, so I'm a huge believer in it. I think for a while, Shorts were all about Shorts, and they weren't driving as much to the main channel or the longer form stuff. Yeah, now they've kind of fixed that, um, and it, that seems to be getting better. Um, but yeah, no. I, Here's where I'm at with YouTube shorts. It's so weird. I love them, yeah. but I hate what's happening. <laughs> well, and what I mean by that is I love the success that they've brought to yeah. our channel. I love that I've, you know, I've got obsessed with shooting underwater footage a number of years ago. And I love the fact that like, again, you said you can experiment the YouTube. That was literally just an experiment because I mean, yeah. I'd cut longer videos of fish. But all of a sudden, once I started just putting these quick like eats up, just one eat. And now you just see how many of them are like it's it yeah. obviously became Crazy a thing. <laughs> um, well, I looked at your channel. It was at 70,000. And then all of a sudden it's at 220,000 or whatever it's at now. And it's just like, whoa, that, that and that's great. And it's just like you saw what was working and capitalized on it. What I was nervous about, and I, that's why I was curious what you're going to say there is I've heard that posting shorts potentially don't translate into the longer form. And that you bring in people that maybe aren't as engaged in the longer form, but now you say that's being improved. So I've posted a couple of shorts and they've been fine, but I've been cautious to not go all in on the shorts because, uh, you know, they've for various reasons, right? Yeah, it, it's for me. I've found it to be to be good. Um, I, I think you see a lot of channels doing a, a shorts channel, like a clips channel. Yeah. Um, I always kind of thought, you know, our channel's not big enough to do a second channel. And now yeah. our channel, like now you're like, well, I don't, I mean, I've got 200 and something thousand. Why would you want to start another channel? Why would I, I want to start it. another channel? Yeah. I, um, I think it's to each their own. But the weird thing about shorts that I found too is, and I think this is YouTube in general, you just got to keep plowing. Like, because it, yeah. it had literally got to the point where I was like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to put these up anymore. And it, it had been a couple of months, like where yeah. I was like putting these up and we'd get one that would get traffic, but then like five of them wouldn't. And then, yeah, all of a sudden they started picking like it was literally I was literally just about to be like, I'm not wasting any more time on those. And one of them was like, I'm like, that is a million plays. What happened to that video? Yeah. And then you just start. So I, I think it is you know it is one of those repetition things just like all of youtube you know what i mean like if somebody watches one of your videos and likes it they're going to see more of your videos over the next yeah. few days and yeah. if you can get them to watch another one then they're going to see and it just continues on so i think it's good but here's the negative that i was going to like what i think is horrible is it's dementing people's minds like the, the <laughs> yeah. your like attention the, span is just flip oh. flip flip what, what's tough is now when you open the youtube app on your phone the first thing you see is shorts you don't yeah. even see that's what it, it it defaults to seeing shorts and and shorts are great but when i go to youtube i go to youtube for longer form content if i wanted shorts i'd go to instagram or tiktok right so i, I find i find that well, they know that that's why shorts are first because they don't want you to go to tiktok yeah, anymore exactly. <laughs> yeah. um no, no, I agree with you, but and I just think like it's just demented for your mind. Like to oh, yeah? to me, it's like I take one of those under some of those really cool underwater eats, dude. When I was a, I, I've explained to people, I'm like when I was a kid, that is in freaking in fisherman TV commercial right there. Like yeah. the way that fish comes up and inhales that bait, you yeah. put a little music there to it and a tagline, and it is a TV commercial that you will watch for the next yeah. ten years and love it. Now it's just like boom, you're just like it's not the next, yeah. I, I just feel like 
I feel like everybody absorbs stuff, but nobody really like, dude, ask people what they think of Game of Thrones. Like, it's a popular show. Yeah. Tell, you really, really start asking people, say, well, tell me about it. What is what is Game of Thrones? And uh, there's dragons and fire. And yeah. I don't really know who that person is, or this person, but I watch yeah. every week. It, yeah. it, you know what I mean? But I think that that's our world is becoming weird that way where it's just too much instant gratification like yeah but and, th and that's that's what i do like about youtube is if i can get someone's attention for 20 30 40 minutes i i, I appreciate that because i know how valuable time is these days so if i can actually get someone to sit down and watch so that that's something where i and a podcast right if someone sits and listens through an hour podcast that's that's pretty cool like they've got to really care to to do that so yeah th thank you to anyone that's still listening at this point well hopefully because because you mentioned experiments, and this is an experiment. I mean, I, I could have just gone and had an Elite Series Pro on, but yeah. we decided to see if anyone would watch this show. But, this I, dude, and then at the end of the day, too, I also think it goes back to something you mentioned, too. Like, you just got to make content that you are proud of. And not that I, I wouldn't have been proud make, of to yeah. do. like, But, like, you're a guy who, like, I just keep seeing things, and I'm like... I got to talk to Jay. Like, you know what I mean? Just because there's so many different things that you're involved in and, and I keep seeing them pop up. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think people will dig that, you know, there's, if you're willing to work hard, there's ways to make a living in this sport. Well, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you don't, I, and I mean, you're surrounded by tournament pros, but you don't have to be a tournament pro. I, and no. I feel like there's just so much room for being a creative, you know, content producer. And yeah, there's, there's, back to what you said there's a lot of work how hard are you willing to work and uh you know it's not going to be it's not going to be overnight but how like come yeah i got one last question how come yeah. how come uh how come aaron's not a guggen like how is he not like i agree with you where he was one of the forefathers of the sport like how yeah does he just not want like does he just not want it um, man, that's a big question. And that's <laughs> something you might, yeah, I don't know. Like I've, I've always said that, uh, there's like a, a, a business to artist scale. Uh -huh. I, I love, I love, I just, I like the entrepreneurial business side of stuff. That's just not Aaron's passion. He just is an Aaron's, artist. Aaron's, Aaron is so far to the artist side that he would turn down a brand deal to make sure he's making the best video possible, which is so admirable. So admirable, yeah. right? So I mean, that's why there's a reason why you know I, I can say this because Alex Perrick is a friend of mine, but there's videos that Alex has posted that they get posted, they get their views, and they may never get viewed again. There's videos that Aaron has posted that will get viewed for the next 30 years to come, right? Yeah. And that's that's just the type of content they made and the directions they went. And you know, Aaron hasn't been posting for a while, and we all hope he starts posting videos again. I think he's just, you know hanging out for a bit, but who, who knows? That's the beauty of YouTube. You can come back and start posting videos whenever there's no schedule. And, you know, I think it's also part of the beauty of him. Like he's, he's created a weird, like, like I think part of the success of this very show is the fact that we're here every single Wednesday. You can, you know what I mean? Like through thick yeah. or thin, I've made sure we got a show. He's done the exact opposite, which goes against know so yeah. many, that, but it's, it is, it's, when his videos come out, people notice, you know what I people mean? People talk, like, people are texting and they're like, they're like, we got to watch the episode. We got, we got to, <laughs> you know, they get together and watch the episodes and stuff. And, and uh, so, yeah, there's, there's something to be said for that. You know, we all, uh, we all love when Aaron's posting videos. Just want to make sure yeah, that he'll, he'll do it when he wants to do it. Right. No one's going to tell Aaron what to do. He's, <laughs> he's, uh, he's always gone to the beat of his own drum and that's what we love about him. And uh, yeah. So who knows? He, for all we know, the next video could be coming tomorrow or it could be coming in six months or yeah. But, yeah. What when are your videos coming out? Ne next week? Yeah, I don't really schedule them too much, but I Oh, you don't do a schedule. No, I just drop them when I do. I probably have like four videos in the hopper right now, sort of thing. And uh yeah. Yeah. As I finish them, they go up. I have a tough time sitting on videos. The only videos I will sit on will be if I film ice fishing videos in like March or April, and then I'll release them in November. Yeah. Um, when people are excited for ice fishing sort of thing. But other than that, I like to post videos. I like to have them pretty current. And that's such a different thing from TV too, right? You're not sitting on episodes that uh, maybe shot a year ago. It's Yeah. But TV is so restrictive too. That's what I find. And I know 
any of the networks we deal with probably hate me saying this, but I, I just have yeah. hated the fact forever that like sometimes the opening segment should be longer, longer or yeah. shorter or whatever, like whatever is deemed. But because they say it has to be between four minutes and seven minutes or whatever the time. Yeah. I hate how like there's a lot of a lot of roadblocks in TV where where and and hey, that might also be the future of YouTube. There may be more roadblocks down yeah. the road, but but it is a much freer easy thing and it's kind of like a podcast you just talk for a while until you feel like you've <laughs> yeah. talked enough and then you say goodbye and i think we're there <laughs> yep yeah exactly <laughs> no man it was, it was it was good uh good chatting it was this it's, was long overdue yeah yeah well let's keep in touch and hopefully somebody watches this episode and that we can good. do this more often but i'm pretty sure people will tune in um I'll get all your info and put it down in the link below. If you're not following this guy, you should be. It's good, great content um, on YouTube, and 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 he does a lot of neat things like we've talked about. Well, thank you, Dave. I've I've uh, looked up to you over the years, and uh, it's been an honor chatting. Good talk. If you ask me, that is a great dude with a great outlook on life, and. Um, as if he's not successful enough already, I'd say he's got a very, very bright future because uh, he loves it enough and he's willing to work hard enough at it. And I mean, when he said, I just kind of relate with him with that whole like, yeah, I don't have enough time to do the things I do, but I don't want to say no to any of the things I get to do. And um, it's a good way to live life. And I thank Jay for being our guest this week. And I guess I'll get back to the monotonous task of trying to convince someone to be our guest next week. And while I'm doing that, Bob Cobb, how about you take it away? Enjoy Bean. Have a great week, everybody. And now I'm supposed to say, Bob Cobb, take it away. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Because Bob Cobb of the Bassmasters told you to. You hear?